Hi everyone, what's up? In front of me today, I have the Knock Air Grind. And what you wanna know is, what is it about this hand grinder that's different from all the rest of the other hand grinders? And I'll tell you, this grinder is one of the most portable and durable grinders that I've used to date. And it is the cheapest stepless hand grinder. And to add to that, it has one of the best burst sets within it, combined with stepless grinding to punch well above its weight for grind performance. And its value is well substantiated because of that. Placed in a lineup of well-known portable compact grinders, it's only slightly taller than the rest and a little heavier. Capacity is about the same, but durability, the air grind knocks the rest out of the water. No pun intended. With design refinements, since their first release of the air grind, it is now free from any plastic parts with a walnut wood knob to the removable crank handle, a snap-on magnetic metal lid with laser-etched grind dial up top, and then the whole grinder honestly feels extremely robust and solid, whereas some grinders feel tinny, others feel too light to be metal, the air grind feels every bit metal and ready for adventure. In changing the grind, you keep the crank handle on the drive shaft and then rotate the lid independently of the crank handle and the body of the grinder. I've even been able to pinch the lid and hold onto the body whilst rotating the crank handle and you can also change the grind this way. Now I have mentioned this is a stepless grinder, which means there are no clicks in changing this grind setting and you can make as small as a grind adjustment as you like. And this goes a long way to getting that perfect grind size for whatever brew method you're using this grinder for. Now to interpret air grind settings, you have two numbers. The first number will represent full rotations from the zero point, And then the second number is going to represent individual numbers from that last full rotation. So for a grind setting to get to a, say, a small pour over or an aero press is a 2.4, which would be two full rotations from the zero point, and then four extra numbers to get to your setting. Taking a look at grind settings, let's begin at the zero point. Dial the air grind in to as fine as it will go. Now this is where the outer burr and the inner burr are flush with one another. And I find using a finger now does a good job at testing that. This is your zero point. And it will usually be pointing at between the 12 and the one on the dial. From here, a full rotation of the grind dial will open the burrs up enough for Turkish grinding. And it's around two more numbers to get to your espresso range. Now a neat feature with the air grind is the shape of the drive shaft and the hole found within the crank handle. It's not a hexagon or a square shape, but it's shaped like the letter D. So it can only go on one way, which means from taking the handle off and placing it back on again, you're always gonna land on the same spot and never lose your grind setting. Also, this notch found on the crank handle, which you use as a site for what grind setting you're on, it seconds as a bottle opener, which is pretty neat for a portable hand grinder, and you never know when that might come in handy. Now, the latest and easily the best upgrade to the air grind is the 38 mm titanium nitride it mill burrs, which provide a superb level of grind consistency, and it makes this grinder a multi-purpose brew method grinder, including Turkish and espresso coffee. Taking a look at the grind performance of the air grind, you find Turkish grinds at around the burrs just open, at 1.2, you start to see your espresso. 1.8, you have mocha pot brewing. AeroPress is anywhere from fine to around 2.4. V60 and other pour overs are from around 1.8 to 2.8. Automatic coffee brewers are around 3.4. And 3.5 and above is great for your French press and cold brewing. All right, let's now grind 20 grams of espresso beans. On an espresso grind setting, which I've got as around 1.3. So that's from the zero point, one full rotation and three extra numbers. Let's see how easy it is. I gotta say, it is a nice diameter to hold onto. It's not thick, it's not too thin, it seems perfect. There's a nice rubber grip here too, so it never feels like it's slipping, although the surface of the grinder is so smooth. In terms of resistance, those nitride burrs are just incredible. That is honestly some of the smoothest grinding I've ever had to perform for grind settings at an espresso range. I originally thought that 
because of how the crank handle connects to the drive shaft that you know it might be flying off all the time and so forth but i think the sh the, the shape of that crankshaft and the fact that i guess you're placing resistance down on the crankshaft that way a little bit kind of stops the crank handle from fall, like flying off while you're grinding. Yeah, look at that. That's really fast. Now the catch cup, really smooth. What do we got like? Almost, almost a full turn off. There's literally no retention or static underneath this grinder really smooth and easy to take that catch cup off but like once it's screwed on it's screwed on nice and tight as well and then to take pour these grinds out of here super easy look at that oh man that's so fine and smells so fresh it's a beautiful grind consistency too yeah and the accessories that you get with the air grind are now a choice of orange, pink, or a black sleeve to go along with the already handy crank handle sleeve holder, which adds further merit as to why this is a great travel grinder, like fantastic. But of course, with that stepless adjustment in the grind settings, it's durability and performance of great burrs, like really great burrs. It makes an amazing hand grinder, whether you're brewing at home or on Crazy Adventures Brewing Coffee. So if you have any further questions on the air grind knock, the knock air grind, add them in the comment section down below and we'll get straight back to you. Thanks for watching the end of this grinder video and we'll see you in the next one.